a moment, we're going to have a brief meditation. And let's just relax in our chairs and sit comfortably with your spine straight, your arms and legs uncrossed, with your feet flat on the floor, and you can rest your hands on your lap. I ask you to take a few deep breaths and see feel and know that you are breathing in love through your heart center. Do this several times until you actually feel it. Sometimes we have a hard time breathing in love. But it's not so hard when you go back and you think of someone who is or has been kind to you in your life. Focus on the memory of this event or this person and just relax into the energy of that kindness. I'm going to give you a moment to find that person and that time and to breathe in the peaceful energy and love. When you find this love that you can begin to breathe into your heart, you begin to feel a softening and an opening within your heart center. And the beautiful thing about this is this enables you to breathe that kindness and love that you feel to others. You can spread this love and peacefulness and kindness you can just see it going out. As you feel this softening of your heart, say to yourself, I am grateful for the kind people in my life, and I forgive all who have been unkind. Repeat this several times and tune into your feelings and your perceptions. Your feelings are of forgiveness and of spreading love and your kindness. When you breathe all this out, <clears throat> excuse me, you are able to release baggage that no longer serves you. You can actually make any statement you wish, remembering that anything you say that follows I am, you are. And at this moment, I ask you to realize that you are one with Father, Mother, God. I am peaceful. I am one with God. I am kind. I am open and receptive to kindness and to love. I care. If you keep your I am statement simple, it makes it easier because you're able to focus on fewer words and that's where your focus goes. I am able to forgive. I am able to love. And as we work on forgiveness and realize that all humans are here on their own journey, we begin stepping into the fifth dimension where there is no time, space, or judgment. We are all wonderful spirits having a human experience. And we are so grateful for this opportunity to live in this time and be in this place. We realize how grateful we are for the many blessings we receive every day. 
I'm going to pause again for just a moment while each of you remembers at least a few of your blessings. And you feel the gratitude for these blessings within your heart center. And as we come back to this time and place, we return with a refreshed outlook and a feeling of gratefulness. And so it is. So today's kind of a teaching spiritual ministry day. <laughs> and I thought um, it was very well said by Connie to premise the the message. I could almost just get up and say amen. <laughs> I think she got a, a lot of my message right there. So we'll take this as confirmation <laughs> that we're heading in the right right direction. I'd really like to start out actually reading something uh, of Charles Fillmore. Uh, for you that know, my time with Unity of Charlotte was a time of being Minister of Education for the four or five years that I was there. So. Uh, I got to do a lot of really wonderful things, but one of the things that I did was connect with the, the spirit of this man called Charles Fillmore. And it all started with uh, the senior minister and I putting on, for you to remember, uh, a skit uh, in which we dressed in the era of mm -hmm. Charles Fillmore and Myrtle Fillmore and had a conversation. Mm -hmm. And when I was in that, uh, and Greg so beautifully got the costumes for us, it was just perfect, period for uh, the, the time they lived and was here. But when I was waiting uh, and meditating before I went out, I just had this connection, this spiritual connection with the vision of, of this founder of Unity, Charles Fillmore. And I guess I'm reading this in reference to the fact that we're not just making up new things now, but actually those who have been visionary planted the seed and prepared us for this particular time. I do believe that these founders of what we call New Thought, whether it's the Fillmores or Holmes uh, and many others that I could name, some of the great uh, teachers of wisdom, Alice Bailey, Madame Oblasky, and others that we could name who must have paid a tremendous price in their day to step out from the uh, orthodox teachings of Christianity and uh, um, Americanism as we knew it based on the idea of being a total Christian nation, we have to honor them today. But he says, there are many planes of life. Now remember this is said over way over 125, 30 years ago, more. One above, one below another, and yet not conflicting. All creation is based on life activity, and it is called in physical science, rates of vibration. A certain activity in the life current forms whirls on a plane which we may call the physical. A little increase in the vibratory rate makes another system which we may designate as the, uh, the psychological. A still higher right, rate makes a universe where spiritual ideas prevail. There are all, they are all interlaced and interblended in the presence around and within us. Hence, what is called the kingdom of God is within you or among you, as one translator gives it. I just think that was a very powerful thing to read of someone who lived back in the 1800s and uh, had this vision of where we were going. <laughs> and I do think that we need to update <laughs> New Thought. I hope that we will. I hope we'll bring it into the 21st century and the unique, unique thing that is taking place in, in that. Oh, there we are. Oh my God. Uh, 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 is the remarriage and bringing together of science and spirituality. Uh, and this is very important that we uh, be a part of this, this wonderful marriage that is uh, basically taking place. On June 20th, 2016, 
a full moon solstice was called an event horizon, which due to several cosmic factors thinned the veil between dimensions and overlapping these different dimensions. So you might think maybe where you were at around that time, if you can, around 2016, that's only a couple of years ago, June 20th, at that solstice was a time in which the veil between our dimensions began to pale and we begin to experience an overlapping uh, of uh, where souls now have greater access than ever before to a fifth dimension reality. So to understand a fifth dimension, maybe we should understand a third dimension. That's the one that you live in most every day of your life. And it's the one we know. Within third, three dimension, we have built systems, third dimensional systems. Education, science, religion, our uh, military, everything is based upon a third dimensional point of view. The most simple way that I can give this to you is to understand that everything that you see through the world of perception is based upon three dimensions of height, width, and breadth. To everything you see around you, there's a height, a width, and a breadth. Now the fact that we have this bit of three uh, bits of information at all time locates us in space-time. And another way, and I can explain that to you, and I've done this many times, if I said to Tom here, let's meet at 4th and Tryon on the 23rd floor, I've given him three bits of information where he could locate me in space. If he can locate 4th Street and Tryon, where they come together, and a building that has uh, whatever number four I said, 23rd floor, he can uh, find me. The only thing that Tom doesn't know is a fourth bit of information, which is what time to meet me. So if I add 1230, I have space time. And that is mostly how we function every day. Our clock gives us seconds and minutes, hours that make up a day, which is all perception. Who's to say what time it is? Remember that old song in the 60s, what time is it? We really have no idea other than how we perceive, how we experience and move through space. If I was at point A and wanted to get to point B, and uh, Charles was also at point A to get point B, I might find it very quickly to get to B. He may end up at B and say, I think I'm never going to get here. So everyone experiences time, space, based upon their perception of it. How we perceive it is our experience. So there's other scientific ideas that we could get into that I won't, I won't do it in the sense that everything has a gravity dimension, everything has a weak and a strong nuclear uh, area. That's getting a little too science. I think we'll just leave it kind of uh, basically where that is. But we are definitely in such a unique time uh, that we have incarnated. I'd like to offer all of you uh, to ask your memory system, your true memory system, not the brain. It's not doing that well these days. But you have a better <laughs> memory system called the Holy Spirit in you. And it's there to remind you and bring to remembrance all things throughout your entire life story and stories that you have today. And it will bring to remembrance uh, a time uh, in which you have made certain contracts and agreements for this lifetime. To me, this lifetime is like no other lifetime to uh, many, many people. I don't know if all, but many people who have signed up for this assignment. And the assignment being to live through a shift of ages. That is your assignment, how to survive it. And it's not, nobody promised us an easy transition. Every transition from one age to another age has been turbulent. It has been challenging. It is a time of breakdown. It is a time of breakthrough. And we have to connect to the breakthrough rather than just the breakdown of old systems 
as new systems are beginning to form themselves based upon a new dimension of energy that we're calling fifth dimension energy. What is the fifth dimension all about? According to spiritual author and future visionary E.M. Nicole, fourth and fifth dimension is, a manif manifest, is manifested through higher consciousness of heart-centeredness. So this tells us that the heart has a lot to do with fifth dimension. And how I see this and how it was given to me is that fifth dimension, which is made up of photons. What is a photon? A photon is the smallest unit of light. Now you've heard of a photon being light. You've heard of a phonon being the smallest unit of sound. So you have photons, which is units of light. You have phonons, which are units of sound. You put sound and light together, it is phenomenal what can happen in the way of creation. And this is why that we're leaning back into these ancient, ancient ways of Atlantean and other ancient civilizations that knew how to do these things. Uh, they didn't cut each other. They didn't do surgeries and operations, but they scanned each other. Uh, they used crystals with each other. They used colors. They could see auras. They were intuitive. And there was a whole different method of healing than the healing that we have today through the new, more Newtonian idea that we are human beings, bodies of machinery with parts that either can be fixed or taken out. Today we're moving into a fifth dimensional idea of holistic thinking in which we see the body as the body orchestra and that everything has its part to play and everything is dependent upon everything else. Even your tonsils, <laughs> even things that have been taken out because they said we didn't need them. I'm sure there was a purpose and a reason why they have been uh, there. But even though things are changed in our physical dense body, third dimensional body, it is not in our etheric fifth dimensional body such as people who have had amputations of some kind, we know that they still have phantom pain. And if you do photography, curling photography, you will still see the leg or the foot is still there because you cannot amputate the etheric energy. The fifth dimensional body is always intact. And it's through that kind of faith that we say, I am whole in this moment. All right? Can you say it with me? I am whole in this moment. Yes. And if we keep feeding that and keep letting ourselves uh, understand that, I think that we will, we will do that. Third dimensional norms is about me. It's about the human ego. What I called the pseudo ego this morning in the class. Pseudo ego is the ego that we form ourselves to be based upon outside external information from culture, society, religions, uh, even our tribal, even our racial, gender, all of these external identities form a self. Unfortunately, that self, in most cases, is not the self that was created to be. So we have a true self, what we call the authentic self, or the divine self, the sacred self which in New Thought we are comfortable to call the Christ within, presence. All the same thing, called many names. And it's, it's important that we uh, understand that the pseudo-self is the me. And of course, from that comes fear and greed. Greed is so prevalent today in the third dimensional world. It is all about greed. It's about my stuff. It's about there's pieces of the pie, and if you take a piece, then there's less for me. Fifth Dimension says, there's a, once you have the recipe, you can make all the pies you want. And there's enough pie for everybody, even if somebody takes a piece of the pie. And therefore, you begin to move away from a competitive to a cooperative consciousness in which that you stop being jealous or feel like somebody's taking something from you but realizing the plenty and the abundance of the fifth dimension and what it offers us. In fifth dimension, it's not the me, but it's the collective. It is the us. It is you and I together. 
Of course, the miracle says that we do not grow as fast by ourselves as we do together. And I agree with that. I think that's one of the great reasons of coming together with more like-minded people and birthing group ideas rather than individual ideas. I think the fact of people coming together and dialoguing and having conversations and pulling in fifth dimensional photon information. You've heard the term enlightenment. Enlightenment is always about information. It's about knowledge. And the knowledge that we need today is not the recycling of old third dimensional knowledge. We know what that's called insanity. Yeah. If we keep recycling what's caused all of our issues and problems and try to recycle it to fix it, then we have, uh, we've found ourselves trapped in a, a loop that will bring us nowhere, but continues toward apathy and toward regeneration. New information is available to us. I realize that there has been decades of time in which we've reached back and to restore the ancient teachings of indigenous people. That has been going on for a lot of decades as the, the new interest in, say, Native American culture became very popular in the last four or five decades. People started drumming, people started doing sweat lodges, people started doing powwows, medicine wheels, all that kind of thing, and yet the fundamentalist was calling that new age. <laughs> it wasn't new age, it was actually ancient that was being restored and brought back to us. The Aborigines, I could mention so many, the Mayan, so many ancient indigenous people who had a contribution to our planet that was lost in the editing out of so much of what has formed us to become civilized people. And therefore we've excluded so much. And that has been going on for a lot of decades. What I'd like to present to you is a completely different dimension in which I have not seen or ear heard the things that have been prepared. That's a scripture. It says, I have not seen nor ears ever heard what is prepared. That means that there is information that is so fresh and so new that we have yet ever brought it into our consciousness. And that is photon information. Now photon information has to get to our consciousness. How does it get to our consciousness? First, it has to learn how to bypass the defense mechanisms that the brain has set up. The brain has been very good at setting up defense mechanism in the form of belief systems. You just try to deal with somebody who has a different belief system than yours, and you will meet a lot of resistance. Whether it's in your family or your best friends or whatever, people worship their belief systems. I've often said people worship the belief system of God rather than the God of their belief system. Oh, that's true. Wars are fought over belief systems. People are murdered and raped over belief systems. People have set up belief systems as idols, psychological idols in their own minds, and they've given their power to them. Psalms 115 says they have made images. These images have no throat to speak, no eyes to see, no ears to hear, but they that made them became like them. And that's what's going on out there in the name of religion all over the world is people are bowing down to their belief systems that they have gotten through different texts and religions. And even though these images are nothing, we've given our power to it by believing in them. So oftentimes our belief systems are nothing but just a bunch of BS systems <laughs> that we need to review and look at. And we need to get into a knowing system. And the only knowing system there is, is remembering everything that we've ever known even before we came in, that we have forgotten. That's called an epiphany. More and more epiphany should be happening to you. More aha moments. When you have a thought that you would have never thought, that's an epiphany. And there are thoughts just waiting to come in right now. So it has to get past the brain because the brain is going to judge it, right, wrong, good or bad. Anything new, anything new I say here today, your belief system is going to want to challenge it. Now, do I believe that? I don't even know what he's talking about. I don't think, I think I'm going to reject that because I don't want to think about it too much. And it's not quite fitting my 
belief system I'm comfortable with. So this new information has to bypass the entire defense mechanism of the brain. To do that, it has to move through the heart gate or chakra, whatever you want to call it. The heart receives the fifth dimensional energetic data that is coming in through fifth dimension to our third dimension. And when it does, the heart works with something in the brain that has been planted there, which is the most spiritual, physical little organ that's a fourth of an inch called the pineal gland. The pineal gland fascinated me in the late 60s when I heard and read an article that the pineal gland in human beings which has been dormant for centuries is being reactivated. And the pineal gland fascinated me. And it's called a pineal gland because it's kind of in the shape of a pine cone. Now, if you'll start noticing those who are in power of third dimension have pine cones everywhere, including the Pope having a pine cone on his staff. There's a big pine cone outside of the Vatican. If you will look at where all the power is in the world today, you will see the symbol of pine cones because they've understood the only way to keep people dumbed down is to calcify the, the pineal gland. Preach. Hitler understood this with the Jewish people. He understood by putting fluoride in the water would calcify and dumb the people down to be docile. They walked right into those places with no argument or no fight about them. I've never seen one time that they have fought back. But they had been prepared and dumbed down. What did America do? We immediately took over the fluoride and put it in our toothpaste and in our water and in our vaccines that we give to our children when they're first born. So there's nothing more important than to activate the pineal gland. to stay alert. So the fifth dimension energy comes in through the heart. The heart gives it to the pineal gland. Now most of you know the pineal gland for the fact that it has to do with uh, melatonin. Right? Some of you might take melatonin to don't sleep well because it has to do with your biological clock of awake and asleep. Awake and asleep. Right? So it is able to change this fifth dimension data information and make it into a melatonin chemical that is then distributed into the brain and the brain is penetrated with fifth dimensional data. That's an epiphany. That's an epiphany. That's when you get something you would have never thought about. That's when something comes out of your mouth and you're going, where would that come from? I would have never thought of that. And more and more that 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 is extended into the world, the more we will shift the collective unconsciousness of our planet. <laughs> it is not about just my group. It's about planetary. Barbara Marks Herbert calls this an event that will take place on the planet called Pentecostal Planetary Pentecost. And she based that upon when they were told to go to the upper room and to wait until they're endued with power from on high on the day of Pentecost. Pentecost was a feast. It means 50. It's not a religion and a church that I'm from. But uh, Pentecost was a, a, a day of meant 50. And it meant a day that all the slaves are set free and all the debts are paid and everybody gets to start all over again was on Pentecost. And it was on that day that Jesus said, I want you to go to the upper room. <laughs> a new thought that is called higher consciousness. Anytime we go to a mountain, a hill, or an upper room, we're going to a higher state of consciousness. He said, go there and wait. And go there and wait until you're endued with dunamis, is the Greek word power, which we get the word dynamite. <laughs> That's where the word comes from. Dude with power from on high. And when that happened, it said every man was there from every known nation that there was. 
But all of a sudden, every man understood everybody else from their heart. Beyond the tongues, the language difference, all the barriers, man had an experience of connecting and understanding the very soul of each other. I remember the day that Kennedy was shot. I was a stock boy in a department store in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I was up in the stock room and I looked out the window and people were coming out of buildings and gathering in the street. And I thought, what in the world is going on? And when I found out what, it, when I found out what had happened, I found out that this was going on all over the world where this was being broadcast, that people were coming and gathering themselves because of the tragedy. The tragedy was bringing the people together. And we still come together because of tragedy. Wonder if that turned and we came together because of an explosion and power of love being manifested out of enough hearts of people that it literally shook and vibrated the collective consciousness and shifted it from fear-based to love-based. I ask you to take the vision today, the big picture. Don't be sucked into all the small picture of the media and what's happening with Trump and what's happening now. See the big picture. And the big picture is there's a divine plan that is going on and you have chosen to be here to participate in it. Don't be on the sideline with it. The ego is all about separation. Fifth dimension will be Christ consciousness. The teacher Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am you may be also. I dare to say that he was talking fifth dimension. That Jesus the Christ <clears throat> resurrected in the sense of raising his vibration to a fifth dimension vibration where he says, I will wait. I will wait for you. I will take over this atonement process. Atonement meaning the undoing or forgiveness of third dimension. Mm. I will help you to undo all the third dimensional. Cast away the weights that have you so easily beset that you may run this race swiftly and with patience. Mm. We call this Christ consciousness is fifth dimension. Third dimension is always to keep crises alive. To even keep our financial system going is about wars mm. there's great money to be made in these kind of crises that goes on right. fifth dimension is crises to transformation only to bring transformation of consciousness third dimension is dominant with worry and anxiety fifth dimension is enhanced with intuition third dimension is more room between cause and effect. Fifth dimension is no buffer. Live mindfully. You will speak the creative word. In fact, we will move to a lang an inner language of telepathy. Yes. We will begin to know thoughts even before they are spoken. Third dimension is linear. Fifth dimension is vertical. Third dimension is brain driven. Fifth is heart driven. So we use a lot, we call uh, some energetics and what we do with 24 is a fifth dimensional bridge, a bridge to fifth dimension. What we believe that we're living in is called the curve. <clears throat> now, if you've studied Einstein and studied some of these fathers of quantum thinking, you will know that the density of mass will always bring a curve to itself. That's why planets are round and things in the heavens are round is because some are bigger, some are smaller. It's based upon mass. And I don't know about you, but I think we're at a very density of third dimension. <laughs> it's a very heavy time to be living in third dimension. Now, if you look at this, if Tim will put it up there, if you look, it will look like you're going in linear third dimension and you hit what would be perceived 
as the end of the world. That's how you would see it if you were a literalist biblical Christian, you would see the end of the world. But it's not the end of anything, it's the curve that we're basically living in. So when you get into third, fourth, and fifth dimension, you begin to find the way in which the universe unfolds itself, which is through the the uh, the vortice yeah. and the spiral. Yes, the spiral. Let's go to the spiral. Now, the reason we all need to be tuned one way or the other, I don't care how you do it, is because we've lost the way in which nature unfolds itself. This is where we had a blessing and a curse at the same time. The blessing is that we evolved to become these high species of animal uh, that separated from the animal world in the sense of creating and evolving a frontal cortex. And in that frontal cortex of the brain, we're able to do things like think for ourselves, and have imagination, and it separates us from all the other animals. And, and I know y'all have smart animals, <laughs> but they still don't have what we humans actually can have in the sense of imagination and so on and so forth. It kind of put us at the top of the heap, so to speak, of evolution. But sometimes what blesses us in the beginning betrays us in the end. So as we've continued to try to follow a linear uh, consciousness of third dimension, which is this, I don't have, but I can get it. Hmm? Um, I don't have prosperity, I can get it. I don't have a healthy, well body, but I can get one. I don't have the companion that I want in my life that walks with me spiritually in consciousness, but I can get one. So we come from a belief in lack. Mm. And then the whole system has been built upon, if you come to us, we can give it to you, Ooh. what you don't have. And this is what religion has done. Mm. And, and now it's being done in marketing itself. Everybody's got the something you don't have, they got it. And I'm the worst. <laughs> I'll repent right here. I keep looking for the magic bullet, the right supplement, the right thing, the right practitioner. And I'm not against any of those things, but they're not the answer if we're coming from lack. We have to come from this vertical idea that everything that ever could be here exists here in the holy instant. Anything that I ever could attain that I think I don't have already exists. Mm -hmm. You got to come from that. Now I'm talking, to, I'm talking about the new consciousness. I'm talking about fifth dimensional Christ consciousness brought into the, uh, to be practical living. That's why I don't mind Fillmore's idea of practical Christianity. You know, Christianity we got an issue with, but practical I don't. Practical merely means taking these things that we talk about and make them a practical part of everyday life. Now that does not mean to me that you should use new thought uh, principles and teachings for escapism. You gotta be careful about using your spirituality as a drug. There was a book came out years ago, and it, it was tremendous, by Father Leo Booth, When God Becomes a Drug. And it reminded me of my early days, and I've got to stop here in a minute, in my early days as a young minister, fiery, you know, had a good church going, and uh, it's in the 60s and 70s, and the, everybody was on LSD and drugs, and we were up preaching how evil, and the devil was taking over, and we felt so good. I was so glad. People say to me, have you ever had drugs? I'd never have a drug. I'm saved, sanctified, filled the Holy Ghost on my way to heaven. 
How dare you to ask me if I've ever had any drugs? Then I read that book and I realized that I did. God had become my drug. That the services that I had got me high. It brought me into a euphoria. Now you'd have to understand the religion I come from, but it was all about the devil's got me and, and I'm going to overcome the devil today. In Jesus' name, I'm going to overcome the devil. And we would whip ourselves up into a frenzy enough that we believed victory. Man, victory. I've overcome victory. And then by Wednesday, it kind of wore off. And you found out what you thought you'd overcome was still there. So Wednesday night prayer meeting, I went back for another fix. And I was living in euphoria. Believing that something had happened that had not taken place at all. So this drug thing comes in many, many ways uh, in the sense of euphoria. We don't want euphoria. We want reality. We want the principles of new thought to become the reality of our life, not some place we escape from the pain. It's not there to do that. Positive thinking is not to escape from just negative thinking. I'd rather have spiritual thinking than positive thinking. Any day. Hmm? Any day. I'd rather have spiritual thinking. I'd rather the spirit to think through me and as me and be neither positive nor negative, but to be authentic and real thinking, divine thinking. It's so tremendously important. So the fifth dimension is about wholeness. It is not a dimension of lack or need, but it is feeding the authentic self within us. I think that we totally feed the illusion of ourselves too much until the illusion has become so powerful that it seems like the, it's taken over the world. That's not true. Something else is happening. We read a scripture in class over there today in Hebrews 11 that says that we should put ourselves in our faith in the things which are not seen by the five senses, but that are real. And I ask you today, we are becoming more and more fifth dimensional beings. The norms of your life will change. And as Connie put it so beautifully, even if things are happening like somewhere you've been many times, but you pass it and you wonder what happened. Or a car is following you behind and you're aware of it. And all of a sudden the car's in front of you and it never went around you. Just little things, subtle things like that is telling you that you are moving into a fifth dimensional experience. I, if you're interested in this subject, I was surprised to find out how many subjects on this is on Ted's talk. Yes. There's all kinds of people yeah. with great yes. credentials that's talking about fifth dimension. It is growing. Long before I started talking about this years ago, it has become almost everywhere. So I'd like to end this with a three minute video. You have that? No. Well, if we don't have that, I guess we won't. <laughs> Yeah, it's on your email. I put a three-minute uh, talk on third dimension. I hope that you'll look at it if you if you got an email from us and listen to it. So I hope some of this makes some sense to you. I just wanted to introduce it to you because I think it's a, a more, a, it's on my mind. It's on my heart. Uh, I'm passionate about it. I do not think our answer is fixing what's broken, but I think it's being resurrected and raising our vibration to a whole new dimension of what it means to be human.